Hey, this is my uh, modified Leatherman here. Uh, this tool has parts from four different Leatherman models on it. Um, in order to build it, I bought some of them new, some of them used, um, and sold the rest of the parts on eBay, and a few of the parts I just bought separately off of eBay because they were available. Um, I built this tool after uh, modifying my Wave a few different times and really figuring out what I wanted, and it's kind of been a work in progress. Uh, to get to where it is now. So I'm just gonna go through the entire thing and explain uh, why I chose the tools I chose and what I had to do to make this work. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. So as you see, this is a Surge frame half and an ST300 frame half together. They fit together oh, perfectly fine. All you gotta do is uh, remove one frame half from the uh, plier head and install the other one on the plier head. Uh, very simple to do. Um, the SD300 frame half has the low side ruler on it, so you can see uh, I don't have to open the tool to use the ruler at all. There's the centimeters, and on the other side is the low side inches. Um, the surge frame half uh, is the high side, and when they open up, uh, they match up and the measurements are still accurate. Uh, one benefit, a few benefits from having the SD300 frame half is uh, the outside of it's a lot smoother, so it's in my pocket. I can reach in, put other things in there, and I'm not going to get poked or jabbed by any of these things sticking out. The other uh, nice part about it is that outside ruler. Um, it is a bit lighter, keeps the weight of the tool down uh, a little bit, um, a little over an ounce probably from a basic surge. And uh, you also get this flat zone here for ta lightly tapping things and you know, banging pins in and whatnot you can see I use that a little bit there uh, I don't go too crazy with it but it is nice to have that flat area there to uh, tap some pins into place um, I really like the SD300 and the one I had um, built had all the tools I wanted in it but I missed a, a few things from my wave and primarily that was the pocket clip um, you can add a pocket clip to the SD300 but it requires modifying the frame and you can't take it off uh, without taking the screws out the surge and wave pocket clip, um, you, know, you press that uh, tab there and you can pull this thing off if it gets in the way. And um, it's just much more convenient to have that pocket clip like that. This is a D-O-N-K donk clip off of Amazon. It's titanium. Comes up a little bit higher here so you can run a lanyard and uh, just rip that uh, clip off when you press that button if it gets in the way and easy to reinstall it. Uh, I have a lanyard on here because this is a deep carry tool. This does weigh a lot, well over 10 ounces, and I just like to be able to get it out of my pocket quickly uh, using that lanyard. And also that lanyard helps me identify what side of the tool I have if I um, am in a precarious position on a ladder or something. I know what side of the tool I have because I have the lanyard there. Uh, the other thing I was missing about the, the surge and uh, wave was the outside opening knife blade. Um, really nice to have that. I didn't realize how much I was going to miss it. Uh, I just hate fumbling with sharp edges, and it's much more convenient to have it on the outside. You'll notice this is not actually a surge blade, though. This is the blade off of a Leatherman Mutt. It's a Warncliffe style, as well as uh, partially serrated. So this is the only knife I have on here, so it's nice to have um, that duality there, rather than just a full straight edge, which I typically prefer on EDC knives, but because this is a multi-tool, we want this to be able to do a lot of different things. I like having that combo edge there. And the, the mutt blade is much thicker than the surge blade. It has a much stronger tip. Uh, in order to get this fit, there is a requirement of uh, grinding the, the bottom of the blade here and uh, grinding the tang there so the lock bar uh, fits. Uh, I will be blacking this so it uh, matches the rest of the knife with some blacking gel, but I haven't done that yet. But it does lock up perfectly fine and fits well. On the other side, uh, again, that's not on the surge at all. That is a mutt saw blade. Again, it's a little bit thicker than the surge blade and wave one. However, uh, it's also longer and that's why I did this. I had the T-shank on here. Didn't think I would miss the, the little bit of length I was missing off of the wave in the SC300, but I did. I used a saw a lot around the house and I wanted that extra length and I wasn't using the T-shank adapter at all other than the saw that was in it. So again, same thing here. Um, Ground the bottom of that blade, ground the tang to fit, and it fits perfectly fine. Uh, even the detent is actually in the right spot on both of these, so works perfect. Now flip it over again. 
SD300 has these cutouts on both handles. They're actually typically for like a nail nick, but it does work well if you have a one-handed opening, kind of get your thumb in there and you can pop the tool open. Plier head is the same plier head on the Surge and SD300 here, very functional. Um, the ST300 frame half has a few tools in it. One is the file. So um, this is off of the SD300. I don't miss the diamond file at all. I never use it. The SD300 has a more of a fine cut file on one side and a rough cut on the other. Now, the, the files that Leatherman has, they have this edge here that you could te technically use to cut metal, but it's not very efficient. So because I wanted the option of having a metal saw, we went to the ST300 EOD, which is the only tool in Leatherman's lineup that actually includes a hacksaw blade. Now, this hacksaw blade adapter is a T-shank adapter, so my tool technically does have a T-shank adapter. However, this is a thinner one, specifically for hacksaw blades, so I can only fit thinner T-shank blades in here. Uh, it's usually just the hacksaw blade. I never really swap it out, but it is nice to be able to replace the hacksaw blade when they wear out because of all the cutting tools, hacksaw blades wear out the quickest and the most frequently. Um, this is nice for tight spaces as well that you can't get a standard hacksaw into. I've used it a number of times, as you can see. It uh, works very well. Uh, but unfortunately, it's only available on the EOD SC300 and can be difficult to come by unless you just buy the, the tool. And on this side also we have our screwdrivers. I have two drivers on here. I've been torn about what to put here, but I've left this because I use it with my Dremel quite a lot. The flathead on the pit driver is not thin enough to fit on the, the Dremel tool. And this also works as good as a tuning screwdriver and uh, a very tiny pry bar. Uh, and then I got that bit driver there, which is available on the Surge and SD300. Set the tool up like this, it barely fit in the camera. And basically I have a uh, straight handled screwdriver there. Um, my lanyard bead here, which I didn't explain, this is, this is a barrel lock off of a carabiner, light aluminum and knurled. Um, that spins easily, so I could just spin that around in my hand, and it really doesn't get in the way much. I do like having that bit driver there. Uh, I carry a bit kit in my backpack, and it's nice to be able to just run and grab that and know what bits I have in there and uh, have that full array there. I like that the bit driver is thinner. It would be nice to have a full-size bit driver sometimes there, but then that reduces the capability of having another tool in here. and as well that bit kit then becomes quite uh, thick and sizable and becomes kind of a burden for everyday carry. On the opposite side of the tool uh, we have a, the, the awl again same thing on the SC300 and uh, Surge. Great little tool to have on there again use it all the time mostly for cleaning out holes and uh, starting holes for screws and things in, in wood. And the final tool on the inside here is my pry bar off of the SD300 Military, or M. This is a great little pry bar from Leatherman, very thick. It has the cutout in the middle there for small nails and whatnot, and uh, it's, a, it's a great little tool to have. Again, unfortunately, this is only available on the SD300M. Again, uh, finding this just without the tool is kind of difficult, and one of the other tools I bought and then sold parts from. Uh, sometimes this clip, like I said, does get in the way, so you can just pull it off, rip it off, and uh, it won't be in the way anymore. So that's the entire tool and modifications I've made to it. Uh, in total, again, four different Leathermans are involved in this build, uh, so <laughs> it's quite multifaceted, but if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll try to answer them.